with Mining IR. We are here at the PDAC convention. This is the 2018 convention in Toronto. This is the largest convention of its kind in the mining industry. And with me is Lachlan from Globe 24-7, a different type of industry than what we've seen at this conference so far. Lachlan, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks very much, Steve, for having me. Now, can you tell us a little bit about Globe 24-7 and what you're all about? So Globe 24-7 started 15 years ago. Um, we started as a HR consulting firm, predominantly in the Australian mining industry. Um, when the market started to grow, some of our clients moved into um, beyond the shores of Australia, into Asia, Pacific and Africa. And we went with them um, to help support them set up operations in some of those more developing countries around the world. Lachlan, is your company more of a boutique style firm or are you guys pretty big? Well, we've, we've been growing over the last few years and especially in the last um, uh, probably four or five years we've grown. We've now got um, staff in 13 different countries around the world. We've got four regional hubs. Those are Perth, Manchester, uh, Toronto here and Bogota in Colombia. And what we try to do is try to service the companies both at a corporate level but also at a site level. And we think it's really important to be both supporting companies um, from those two different areas because ultimately it's not just about what happens in corporate, it's about what happens on the ground as well. And from a HR perspective, that's really important to us is to be close to those people. Now, when you're supporting these companies, do you mean physically being there or are you doing a lot of this business um, you know, via email, via uh, Skype sessions, that type of thing? Our, it depends on the assignment, but a lot of the work that we do is site-based. So we will try to send and have a consultant local to this operation, um, and that may be spending time in Africa, spending time in Colombia, spending time in Peru, wherever the operation is that we need to be to. Because ultimately, again, the people who dig the dirt out of the ground are the people who are at site. They're not sitting in a corporate office. And so we have to cater to both of those, those groups. Now, you also work with a lot of startup companies, and you get them you know, off the ground. What do the first steps look like? It's a good question and in fact the first step would be around developing a really robust and solid HR management plan and that's always important to do that as soon as possible rather than waiting too late. The HR management plan typically will have um, uh, a strong manpower plan, it'll re be reviewing the organisational chart, um, it'll be looking at what the cost of the employment's going to be and whether that's a country, a, a company that's operating in, um, in Africa, it might be around expatriate costs, it might be around national costs, um, it'll be looking at um, the site conditions, uh, it'll be looking at what the requirements are from a training and workforce development strategy, a recruitment strategy, a sourcing strategy. There are so many parts to setting up a solid HR management plan and that's what we help companies with. Now for the most part are you walking into companies that don't already have something in place or are you taking what their HR plan is currently and modifying it? We do both. Sometimes a lot of the juniors don't have a full-time HR manager, they don't even need a full-time HR manager and so our role sometimes is just to provide some support through the startup of that stage and then we'll hand over once they've got that put in place but it's they're not big enough at that stage but they still need the basics, employment contracts and advice and counsel on um, what the roster should be for that operation. So that's really where we might support them but then there's other co companies that are, have been operating for years and that HR department will just need a review, maybe a, an audit, maybe a look at to see how they're going in light of what's happening on a best practice point of view across the world. Well, I can imagine that a lot of these, these companies have had an HR plan, plan in place for years, but you know, they don't go through and modify it and take a fine tooth comb and, and you know, see what's not working. That's correct. And we're in 2018. We're going to 2020. We're not 10 years ago, the industry is changing, the global workplace is changing. We can't ignore the fact that there's a whole group of people coming into the industry that are, are younger, they've got different ways of doing um, what HR means to them is very different and I think that's where um, a lot of companies can put a plan in place but that plan will always be iterative, it will always change and it needs to be reviewed almost on a six monthly basis because the world changes as we know. Lachlan, after you've implemented the HR management plan, what are the next steps and how do you maintain business with these companies? So once the plan's been created, it's about implementing that plan. It's all well and good to have a piece of paper about what this plan will be for our organisation, but there's a reality to that. And so, so it's about implementing that program that's put in place. And as I said earlier, it's about changing that plan as the reality becomes um, known once you get into a certain country, into a certain jurisdiction, or a certain, uh, there might be a change to a mining code or a mining law that has an impact on the workforce. Within our business, um, we've 
uh, provided a great deal of services across the HR spectrum, whether that be from executive to single search to um, uh, compensation benchmarking to um, uh, national um, and expatriate training and development. And one of the things that we um, will try to do with an organisation is support them through not just the ramp up phase, but when they're in operations as well, because things like retention become an issue, things like um, around uh, benchmarking themselves against their peers becomes important, um, turnover becomes important, those kind of things. And so what we have um, done is try to grow that service offering within our business to make sure that we're providing the solutions at whatever phase of their life cycle that they're at. Well, I'm sure many companies, you know, they're always looking to grow and with that comes change within their, their structure. And so I'm sure that's where you guys can come in and, and help with that process. Yeah, correct. And, and change is, is something that's always going to hit us. Even though the mining industry is fairly um, fairly standard and consistent in the way that it goes about its life cycle, there's a, there's a new culture, uh, a, new, a new company that is, is going into a new culture you know, or into a new country. Um, some countries are new. You look at Argentina, for example, the growth that we've seen there. In Guinea, there's six projects that are being developed at the moment. In, um, and that's, a, that's a, a country who now has faced with employment questions around how we're going to start stuff up, how we're going to train these the local workers, how we're going to nationalise this industry. We believe that our success in the HR sphere is really important to help their success. Um, I've got this very strong view that HR needs to be commercial and needs to think about what are we doing as a HR organisation and a HR department and a HR function to get as, help these guys get as much dirt out of the ground or um, sell as many widgets as what they need to sell. And so HR has to be a value add proposition. It can't just be about um, a reactive approach to HR. It needs to be far more proactive um, and be really involved in the activities of that operation. Lachlan, I heard that you recently launched a new company under Globe 24-7. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So last year um, we launched a company called Globe Competency Assurance and really what Globe CA is, is a company that we've been looking to set up for about the last five years. In the work that we, we are involved in, particularly in developing countries, the training and workforce development piece is critical to a, a success of a mining company operating in that jurisdiction. Some companies will, will do that really well and other companies will struggle with how do we do that and Globe CA is our solution to that problem. So we work very closely with mining companies um, around the world to, to provide support for training and developing local workforces um, and an example of that is we're working with a company at the moment in Argentina and that company is establishing a brand new mine. They have six different communities that they've got to recruit locally from and source locally from and the question is well how? How can we, how can we source and assess and attract and recruit these people into our multi hundreds of millions of dollars operation successfully. We want that And what's the answer to that? The answer is that we we use a, a, an assessment tool. We use an assessment tool where we work closely with a community relations team and the Globe CA team and we will um, take that, that tool, that assessment tool, out into a community and we will allow any person that wants to be assessed to go through the assessment tool. We use a, a tool called a Dover assessment and the Dover assessment enables us to whether the person can read or write, is male or female, um, can speak the English or not speak English or whatever language they speak to and we will assess them to know is this person capable of being trained. Now it doesn't mean that they, they will get trained and they, they, they will be 100% successful in that, that role but we take the big bucket of people that want a, want a job in the mining industry and we get it into a smaller bucket that these are the people who may be able to be trained up and then put them onto a training program that might take two, three, four years but we're identifying in the early stages people who have never seen a piece of equipment before, they've never worked on a plant before and we're identifying those people and it's a great, it's a great um, addition to, to what we can help with uh, companies for. Well I think it sounds like that'll be you know a, a big component of what's going on in 2018 for you guys. Now um, I'm sure with your experience you've seen companies who have implemented the plan wonderfully and I'm sure you've seen a lot of people implement it very unsuccessfully. In your opinion what makes a company successful? It's a really good question and, and I guess there's lots of different answers because there's lots of different parts to that, that question but what I would say is that it always starts from the top. Leadership 
the leadership of an organisation will drive the success um, of the culture of the organisation or the lack of success of the culture. That's undeniable, whether you're in a small business or a big business. It's about what is the, the CEO, the COO, um, from a corporate perspective, a general manager at site, from a local perspective, they're going to drive the culture. I'd also say communication is really important as well. There's lots of different ways to communicate and again 2018 we have to be, we have to move from just emails. Site-based people, they get hundreds of emails a day, corporate people, so it's about having different communication, um, formal and informal communication methods put in place. And staying innovative, right? Correct, that's right. It's really important to stay in touch with what's, what's going on. And, and we're all busy, everyone is really busy and to do that and I guess that's where sometimes having that support about what is, what is the best way that I can communicate with this group of people, what is the, um, the easiest way that we can get this message across and there's different varieties of, of that. And the other thing I'd say from a success um, thinking about the HR department in particular is um, it's, about, it's about being contemporary, it's about understanding that we can't do this like we did 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, I remember I worked in an organisation um, and one of the things that uh, the HR manager at the time did was rumour of the month. And so every month we would have um, the HR manager would get up and he would present three or four key rumours that he'd heard in the organisation and then challenge those rumours. And, and it was great because that's what I mean by being proactive. It's about saying, okay, we know these, we've heard these things, but now it's about this is the truth. Correct. Lachlan, what advice would you give to an HR manager that's looking to add value to their organization? The, f the first thing I'd say is um, understanding their role of within the context of that organization. Understanding the what it is that's important to the operation or the company or, or the um, or the site that is that is is operating in that in that market, because once they understand that, they can know what do they need to do to support that. As I said earlier, it's it's about sitting at the seat. It's not. It's about being proactive. It's it's not um, trying to put out fires, but prevent the fires from starting. And that's really an important component. And I think that's where good HR people they really they they take that on board. Unfortunately, with HR people, they get very busy very quickly, and and it's very hard to lift their heads and look around. There, even within their own organisation, are they doing a good job? Do they need to improve in this particular area? Because it's so busy. Um, as soon as that door opens at 6 a.m. in the morning, there's a person standing there, and it doesn't end till 6 o'clock at night. So, so what we do sometimes to support those companies is to um, take that aerial view and come into an organisation and spend just sometimes a few days, sometimes an extended period of time to review and assess what they're doing from a HR practices point of view and to then provide them some insights as to what best practices could be. We're in a fortunate position where we deal with companies all around the world um, and have done for 15 years. So we kind of have an idea about what is what the market is doing, what um, some practices are that you could be doing. And really that's what I think the HR um, manager doesn't always have time to understand that. And that's where we provide that service.